Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers, including the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as we greet you from my sitting room here in the beautiful Caribbean island of Trinidad with assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have been re receiving emails from people who have been asking me kindly offer some views. We are in a state of distress uh, in, uh, concerning events which are rapidly evolving in, in rush between Russia and Ukraine. And could you kindly offer some guidance, some explanation, so we can have a better understanding from the perspective of Islamic eschatology, of course, of what is happening uh, between Russia and Ukraine. And uh, I want to remind you, if you need to be reminded, that Russia today is not the same as Russia yesterday. Yes, there used to be a Soviet Union, which was a superpower. Uh, but that, super, that superpower was sometimes acting in tandem with the West. As you can see what happened in the war of 1973, when the, the Zionists were on both sides of the war. Uh, and uh, that's why the war was taken to a draw. And as a result of that, Anwar Sadat then had a chance to make this this glorified peace with Israel. Um, so that was a piece of, uh, of um, fancy footwork on the part of the Soviet Union. And then you see the Soviet Union again in tandem with the West on uh, when in 19, uh, what is it, 52, uh, Nikita Khrushchev handed over Crimea, which is Russian, to Ukraine in the middle of the night. <laughs> without asking the people of Crimea what they wanted, without seeking permission of the people of Russia. This is what Nikita, Nikita Khrushchev did. So you see the Soviet Union playing uh, a game with the Western world and throwing dust in our eyes. But yes, yet the Soviet Union was a superpower, but this post-Soviet Union Russia, this Russia, which was, in, which was crumbling when the Soviet Union collapsed, within a brief span of 20, 20-something 20 years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown his capacity to help. And this Russia has grown now to a position where it is so powerful. The look at what has happened. The Western world has been ruling over mankind for the last 300 years or more and changing regimes all over the world, really, really, particularly in South and Central America. They use the Monroe Doctrine. This is our backyard. Nobody comes into our backyard. And so they've been changing regimes really, really all over Central and South America for the last 200 years, why have they not been able to change the regime in Venezuela, the government of Venezuela, because it's an elected government? Why? And so they've done everything they could do. There's nothing else they can do now. But they've not been able to change the Venezuelan government, the legitimate Venezuelan government. Why? Because they cannot invade. There is, there is no military option. Why is there no military option? When this is in your backyard, the answer is that if they try to change the government of Venezuela through a military intervention, they'll have to face Russia. And they don't want to face Russia because Russia is not Libya. Russia is too powerful from them. That's why they have not been able to invade Venezuela. Number two, we have pointed out that Russia took a tremendously dangerous step when it, Russia intervened to save Syria. It could have led to nuclear war, but with indescribable courage and integrity and with the entire people of R the F Russian Federation supporting their government, Russia intervened in Syria and blasted 
the bogus jihad, the ISIS jihad, which was created and funded and manufactured by the CIA and by the puppy dogs of the CIA, by Saudi Arabia, by Qatar, and of course, who else? Turkey. Turkey, Turkey was up to the neck in the effort to overthrow the Syrian government. Mm -hmm. And Russia has succeeded. The Western world have never known this before. There's a force so powerful that they can defeat the West. And that's what Russia did in Syria. But the one that hurt the most, the one that hurt the most for the West was when they suffered the greatest defeat in the entire history of modern Western civilization. And that is in 2014 when they lost Crimea. Russia took Crimea, or rather took back Crimea, because Crimea belonged to Russia. Russia took back Crimea in two weeks without firing a shot. And for this, they have never forgiven themselves. Russia is now facing this bitter, bitter uh, hatred and envy from the West because of the power that Russia now has, and Russia is not prepared to bend on its knee and submit to them. The, the West has yet suffered yet another defeat in Afghanistan, and it was a humiliating defeat. They have only themselves to blame for almost 20 years. So many they have killed, they have killed, they have killed in Afghanistan, and yet they were defeated. <laughs> Afghanistan, known, Afghanistan is known as the graveyard of the, of the superpowers. Uh, and uh, now what is happening is that there is a, an incremental effort, beginning with the regime change in Ukraine in 2014, to bring Ukraine into NATO. If Ukraine ever becomes a NATO member state, then Russia will have NATO on its very border, and uh, uh, NATO's, NATO's, NATO's missiles, nuclear missiles, can hit Moscow in a matter of minutes. This is not a security option that Russia is prepared to accept at all. And so Russia has put its foot down. This is our red line. Whether you accept our red line or you don't accept our red line, that's your choice. This is our red line. That we will not allow a next door neighbor state to pose such a tremendously dangerous threat to our security. So we're going to take steps to ensure the protection of our own security. This is Russia's decision, and Russia has every right to ensure its security. When the Soviet Union wanted to put nuclear arm missiles in Cuba, the Kennedy administration decided that this was too great a security threat for the United States. And so they put a quarantine around Cuba that they would not allow any Soviet ships to enter Cuba without being searched so that no nuclear um, missiles can be shipped to Cuba. And that was 1962 and the world watched. We were on the brink of nuclear war. And does Cuba have the right does Cuba have the right to do what it wants on its own territory? At that time, the United States says, no, Cuba does not have the right to pose a significant threat to the United States. And so the, so the United States intervened, and American ships, the Navy, surrounded Cuba. And the Soviet ships were coming with missiles. And when they almost reached Cuba, and there was going to be confrontation, the Soviet ships turned around and went back home. And so nuclear war was averted. Let us remind all those who are beating the drums for, for Ukraine today, including those in Turkey, 
who are beating the drums for Ukraine, let us remind you, if you need to be reminded, that in the same way that the United States expressed its concern for its own security and would not allow Cuba to have nuclear missiles that could reach the United States, similarly, Russia has to be recognized to have a right to protect its own security. It is a superpower. It's the most powerful military power in the world today. And so that is the moral argument and the political argument for those who say, no, no, Ukraine has the right to do what Ukraine wants to do. Well, fine. You cross the red line and you see what's going to happen. Russia is not going to back down. This is the first point I want to mention to you. So if, if these fools with a capital F in NATO decides to continue on this foolish path, they will take mankind to nuclear war and they're the ones to be blamed for it. The second point I want to make is that Russia is attempting to change its strategic environment in such a way that the grave threat to Russian security can be diminished. And for this reason, Russia has amassed more than 100,000 troops, Russian troops, and all the hardware you need, all the military supplies you need for war on the Ukrainian border, the border between Ukraine and Russia. Will Russia invade Ukraine? No. <laughs> Russia, I don't think Russia is so foolish, unless, of course, somebody wants to war, wants to force a war, and somebody causes the fireworks to start. There are always those who want to get war. And Allah speaks of it in the Quran. They want the war to take place, but Allah comes and he prevents the war. So unless and until there is someone who causes a pretext for war to start, Russia will not, I believe, intervene militarily to invade Ukraine. I think I'm correct in that analysis. Well then, what else? The amassing of all of these troops on the Euro Ukrainian power, power, uh, border is a show of force. And that show of force is meant to deliver a message, a military message, a political message, an economical me economic message, but most importantly, a psychological message. And eventually that message will reach the hearts of the Ukrainian people. You cannot be a Ukraine next door to Russia and adopt this position of hostility and posing a grave, grave, grave danger to Russian security. That is not possible. So you will find eventually, I believe, that this Russian show of force, that's what it is, a show of force, will have the effect of bringing about a change in the strategic environment, particularly in terms of psychological change in the hearts of the Euro Ukrainian people. So you can relax. I don't believe there's going to be a nuclear war uh, in uh, between Russia and Ukraine. But keep watching because they are provoking war. They're trying to get Russia to launch a war. That's what they want. But Russia is not that stupid. What is very sad and of course, those uh, there are people who have eyes they can't see, they have ears they can't hear, they have hearts they, uh, they can't understand. They're just like cattle. Why? Why? Why is Turkey still in NATO? Why? They don't know. They can't answer. They don't want to answer. They prefer to eat their biryani and go home and sleep rather to answer that question. In defiance of Allah's command in the Quran, Turkey is in NATO and remaining in NATO. But also, Turkey is building fraternal relations with Russia. At the same time, while you're doing that, you act in such a provocative way. You are arming, you're selling weapons to Ukraine, you're supporting Ukraine against Russia. 
Why is Turkey behaving in such a reckless way? Is there none, any, nobody who can teach a lesson to this reckless man who is ruling over Turkey and who wants the world of Islam to recognize him as a leader of the world of Islam? This man is recklessly misguided. And if he continues on this path, just remember that if war with Russia does start, the NATO missile will fly from Turkey, first of all, against Russia. That NATO will ensure that the first missiles fly from Turkey. Because when that happens, Turkey will be at war with Russia. But the foolish people who are ruling over Turkey don't realize that. Once Turkey is at war with Russia, Turkey will be destroyed. Once Turkey is at war with Russia, listen to me, the Turkish armed forces will be destroyed. And that is when the prophecy of Nabi Muhammad will be fulfilled. That a Muslim army will then conquer Constantinople because the Turkish armed forces have been destroyed. And when we conquer Constantinople, our prophet, Allah's blessing be upon him, praise the army and praise the commander. But those who have only peanuts in their head, oh, no, 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 it was that sultan who was praised. Let them stay with their peanuts in their head. They can't think. Yes. And so when we conquer Constantinople, inshallah, we will return Hagia Sophia to those to whom it rightfully belongs. And that would be the catalyst which will cement the alliance between the Ummah of Muhammad Islam, and the Ummah of Nabi Isa Islam. And these two coming in alliance will then complement the alliance between Russia and China, which pose today the greatest threat, the greatest obstacle to the Zionist rule over the whole world, and therefore to Dajjal wanting to rule the world from Jerusalem. This is my initial analysis. There are others who are far more competent than I am as mili military analysts. You must go to my dear friend, the Seca, uh, the vineyard of the Seca. Go to the Google and check for his his website and go to his website and you'll get excellent, excellent analysis from my brother uh, Andre uh, the Seca in the vineyard of the Seca. But I am giving you an analysis from Islamic eschatology. I see the Russian leadership following the strategic sunnah. If you don't know what is the strategic sunnah, go to YouTube and check for my lectures on the strategic sunnah. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.